Hello and welcome. Well, if there was ever a time in history for us to be more conscientious and mindful of our purchasing decisions, what brands we loyally support and the reasons why we choose to morally support them, it's most definitely right now. Now, as consumers, every one of our purchases is a silent vote advocating and backing and approving of the brand's ethos, the manufacturing processes and supply chain. So even if this isn't a practice or something that we've done before, there's always a first for everything. So today, I am so thrilled to pull back the curtain on an extraordinary Australian brand who have habitually operated with integrity and sustainability in mind, not just for our environment, but also for our children. They are a true pioneer and one to be congratulated. I'm really excited to introduce you to and to be speaking with a founder of a household brand name and undoubtedly a brand you would have heard before, of course. We welcome Pure Baby founder Mirabai Winford. Thank you so much for joining us, Mirabai. How are you doing? Hi, Rachel. How are you? I'm so excited to be here today and share some of my knowledge with you. Yeah, I'm really honoured for your time. And also just to be speaking to someone that, who is a true pioneer um, in this space and has led the way. Um, and this is something that, as I was just saying in the introduction, it's, it's really great for, for families to understand that this is not just, um, I guess, a, a trend that the business is following. You know, for the last 18 years, I understand that Pure Baby has raised awareness and expectation for products in the wider marketplace. And you've also, you know, you've led by example in your industry sector and influenced other brands to look at their supply chain and ensure that they adopt um, sustainable practices. And, you know, as the first organic baby wear brand here in Australia, you've pioneered from a very early stage. Um, so you've dressed so many babies <laughs> in time, um, which I guess has created awareness for the, for, for the choices that parents can make. And of course, when they're nesting their child, children. But from what I understand, Pure Baby is so much more than just a leading organic cotton baby, toddler and kid, kids clothes brand. There is true purpose and integrity behind everything that you do. So can you just tell us a little bit about this inspiration? Yes, you're right. I mean, 20 years ago, when I had my first child, there was absolutely nothing like this available in the market. So we were somewhat pioneering in um, the idea to actually create a range that was made fully out of organic cotton. So back then, it was a very new thing. Um, and you'll see now in the marketplace that a lot of companies have adopted things that were actually really commercially available over in Europe. Um, now companies are actually just adopting those practices as a normal um, way of life and a normal way of doing business. So back then, um, 20 years ago, when I found myself pregnant with my first child, I found it really challenging to find suitable clothing for her. I knew that it was really important to dress her in natural fibres. So I started looking at organic cotton. I looked at cotton and I thought, well, there's a lot of chemicals in cotton. What can I put next to her skin that's not only safe, but durable and also really beautifully designed? So I didn't want, um, I didn't want my customers back then to actually have to choose between products that were organic, but maybe inferior from a design point of view. Mm. And I really wanted to create a range that was accessible, um, that really fit the needs of um, someone like myself who was looking for a natural alternative mm -hmm. um, and someone who really cared about what they were putting on their um, child's skin. So I thought, well, I'm, going, I'm having this <coughs> precious child that I want um, to, you know, to be comfortable in and I didn't want to put polyester on her. I didn't want to put fabrics that were uncomfortable. So I decided that I would actually create my own range and um, sort of 18 years ago started Pure Baby. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I really thought back then there must be parents like me that are also searching for something that isn't available in the Australian market. Mm -hmm. 
And I understand that your vision for, for Pure Baby has always been to develop a beautiful baby wear brand that doesn't compromise on the environment. So I'd love to know on this, you know, where does your, uh, your passion for environmental um, sustainability originate from? was really born out of that desire to create something for my own child. But I was also brought up in an environment where we were eating organic food. My, my family were quite, I think, ahead of the times. Um, and back then it was far more alternative. Um, so it was difficult uh, to kind of maintain that sort of lifestyle. Um, so when I actually... Um, found myself pregnant, I thought, well, I'm eating organic food. I'm trying to find these uh, beautiful natural fibres um, that I know are going to be better for my own child. But I couldn't find them. I couldn't find things in the marketplace that were really kind of things that I knew to be and had grown up with and thought were the best um, sorts of things um, to choose. So for me, it was very natural, but for um, the rest of the market, I think, and um, going out into the stores, I found that they weren't um, available. So that passion for the environment had always been there and bringing it into a commercial sort of environment where I was able to create products um, that were manufactured in a sustainable way and that um, it gave people and customers the choice um, to actually, you know, choose something that, um, that didn't actually hurt the environment when, when they wanted to put clothing on their child. So that passion and everything really originated from my initial upbringing and um, the thoughts that I had back then. And we have the, the difference, I guess, with our business is that we've been doing that right from the start. From we the have very been, start. I mean, 18, 18 years ago is, is a long time ago. And when you think about now, looking at how many businesses um, and, and now sort of, you know, I'm um, doing the same thing, but it, I mean, it, to think about the, the sense of pioneering and, um, and originating from, from that source almost 20 years ago is really incredible. But I'd love to know, like, why do you think environmental sustainability is so important? Like, what, what are your thoughts? Well, I, I mean, with environmental sustainability and, um, and that, I actually think that um, what we do now will obviously affect future generations. So for me, um, it was really important to be able to... Um, to create products that people can actually choose and make wise decisions when they're um, selecting all of the, the clothing for their children. As, as many of your listeners might know, um, if they've had their baby already, um, it's an incredible amount of clothing that you initially have to um, purchase to get ready for the, the birth of your little one. <laughs> so um, as you're preparing, um, you wonder, um, for a first time parent, why why do you have to have so many grossets, so many wraps, so many booties, so many mittens? So um, it's a it's an incredibly um, new sort of journey for parents and as they're choosing which sorts of things to actually um, purchase, it can be really overwhelming. And I think, you know, to actually support uh, products that are manufactured with integrity and awareness of the environment is really important in this day and age yeah. and also those sorts of things if you invest in um, when you're making your purchasing decisions preparing for the birth of your little one um, those sort of things can be lifelong um, decisions like by purchasing clothing that's um, made with um, awareness so um, by purchasing those clothes um, and purchasing quality and durable um, natural alternatives you can actually get a lot more use out of your clothes you can pass it on to other children friends and family and um, you can also I've known, known that with so many family and friends and that, um, that have passed on their pure baby clothing purely just for that reason so it's it's nice to be able to re relay that that back to the founder of the business that that is something that I've yeah. personally experienced and known of as well yeah it's a very common thing that we hear from our um, customers when we survey them is that they actually found out about Pure Baby from um, being actually given a Pure Baby item of clothing 
from a friend or a family. So it's really important that the things that you buy will last. Um, and and in saying that, then the, the quality of the cotton um, is, is obviously something that, that is, um, uh, I mean, it is incredibly important. But why is organic cotton so important, do you think? Well, there is organic cotton and then there's GOT certified organic cotton. Okay, so what's so, the difference? Um, so the difference is GOTS is a global organic textile standard. So that actually covers the entire supply chain. So right from when the cotton is grown in the field to being hand-picked by the farmer to how much the farmer's paid for the cotton, right through to when the cotton is made up to the dyes that are used to how much um, someone is paid to make the clothes that you're wearing right through to being in your home with your child and being on the, on the body of your child. So it's really important that um, not only are we just choosing to, if, we, if it's possible to try and uh, buy organic products, we're actually encouraging um, consumers to look at um, the accreditations and the standards and the logos that are on either their food or their clothing so it's quite important to look for that, um, that standard, which is the global organic textile standard. Mm -hmm. So that just covers the entire supply chain. So it's, giving, it's putting the onus on the, the consumer to be able to make decisions when they're choosing certain products over other products. Mm. And it just means that um, that product not only isn't grown with, that, with chemicals, um, it actually is not treated with chemicals um, during the dyeing process mm -hmm. and then um, during the knitting process and then when it's made and then um, it's, it's fantastic. It's much safer for your baby to be wearing organic cotton that's certified by GOTS. And as you said earlier, you know, what we do now will affect f future generations. So would you say that, um, you know, my question is really how can parents start to make better purchasing choices that will positively affect the environment, uh, where do they start? Is it just the fact that they do need to take the time and do that research and, 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 and understand that process and don't look for that GOT certification on, on clothing um, as an example? And the same thing with organic food as well, you know, there's certain labels um, and, and symbols to be able to look for. Is that what it is, do you think? Yeah, I, I think it's really important to know where your products that you're purchasing are coming from. Yeah. Uh, I think nowadays um, it obviously has originated a little bit from how people started asking questions about where their food um, was coming yeah. from, where it was being made, who was making it. Um, the same applies to your clothing. So where is it coming from? Um, how is it being produced? Yep. How much, um, you know, are we, is that maker being paid for that garment? Um, and, you know, really caring about these sort of things um, really fosters quite a, a healthy sort of attitude to everything we do. So um, I, I think what's really wonderful about, um, I guess, the Pure Baby business and what I created is that, Right from the start, we're obviously um, buying the right materials that have been accredited and um, right through the supply chain and then providing a fantastic entire solution to a parent's, um, you know, wardrobe needs and toys as well that we do. Um, and So much more than just the clothes, isn't it, really? It's, yeah, it's that's right. So we're, we're providing an entire sort of community of um help and support as well, which is fantastic. But when, when you actually buy organic um, and when you buy GOTS organic clothing, it actually covers every part of the supply chain. So that's why I believe that um, when customers are making those sort of decisions, it's quite important to know um, and understand what it. business is doing. Um, mm. if they're giving, if, are they giving back? Um, you know, that actually gives you a lot of, um, kind of comfort, I think, in, in how you how you decide to, um, you know, dress yourself or dress your baby or what you decide to eat. Now, what's really great about um, our particular um, program too is that when you actually buy something, 
we actually have a pre-loved clothing program. So after the customer has actually used the products, they can bring it back um, to one of our stores and we will actually then donate that to some of the charities that we work with. Oh, like that's Super wonderful. Dandelion, and the Dandelion, Dandelion Foundation and Baby Give Back. So we actually recycle, we give the customer a small um, discount on the next purchase. Yes. Um, and then we actually recycle those clothes. So we're covering the full cycle Oh, oh, you're just wonderful. That, that, that is really wonderful. And I, I think it's very important too. So. Yeah, and I, I didn't actually know that people were doing that. So thank you for sharing that. And and, and and talking about environmental sustainability overall, I mean, 2020 has been a year um, that we're never, ever, ever going to forget. I just would love to ask, you know, do you think the events, you know, such as the bushfires in early 2020 have supported the need for greater action just towards um, climate change and just the importance of environmental sustainability overall? What are your thoughts? Absolutely. I mean, global awareness um, about the need to protect the environment has increased dramatically since the bushfires. And I think people's awareness um, all over the world has increased and that has made it even more important for people um, to think about what they're doing and think about the sort of um, brands or businesses that they're supporting and making yeah, sure that um, those brands are actually, um, you know, aware of um, their, their footprint. Mm. Um, so, and do you think that these events have helped, I guess, change Australians' attitude in embracing just new behaviours and that we are slowly becoming more environmentally conscious through the food and clothing that we're sort of buying or not, although that we're saying that it's important, but do you think that we are starting to make those decisions now or not enough maybe? I don't know. Oh, definitely. I, I think Australians are um, adapting and changing their attitude towards um, their buying behaviour. I think that um, the whole world is and so is Australia and um, they're now looking for more sustainable choices um, in products and in businesses <clears throat> and everything. So I think this is just the bushfires has only um, kind of accelerated what was already um, in practice happening. And yeah, yeah, it was already already um, people's awareness about the climate and everything was really brought to the fore when we had the bushfires in Australia um, at, the at the start of, of the year. Yeah. So I think that it has, in a way, even though it was very devastating and it will be something that continues to happen if we don't protect our environment, um, I think that it's, it's done some really good things in that it's raised awareness all over the world. So back in January, I actually wasn't in Australia. I was overseas and the amount of people that I spoke to all over the world in different countries were so concerned about what was happening in Australia and yeah. our koalas and um, everything that was happening. And it really did um, sort of put a light onto um, the sorts of um, devastating things that will happen if we don't protect our environment. Yeah. And, and getting back to what we were saying at the start of the chat also about you know, parents and, and just consumers understanding about the ethos ethos of a, of a business. I mean, what are your thoughts on how consumers consciously or subconsciously choose um, and have the loyalty towards their favourite brands and who they want to support? I mean, um, is it important, do you think, for parents to really understand the vision and mission and ethos of a brand and why the brand exists? Do you think that that's actually important? Most definitely. I think... Um making conscious decisions about where your products come from yeah. is really important now for people. Um, I think that they want to know um, what, that, what that business or what that brand stands for, what the products are made from, um, how they can be helpful in other areas. So obviously there's so many cases of businesses that are doing so well that have a social conscience um, and, you know, a fantastic sustainability aspect to them. So mm -hmm. what's really great about our business is we've always done that. So we haven't had to adapt. Um, we've just expanded into different product categories and 
you know, the educational arm to our business, helping parents. We've always made those decisions. But I, I do think that just on a sort of um, being more conscious about um, your purchasing and um, the sorts of businesses that you support um, is something that um, is happening now and will happen into the future. It's not a trend. It's something that people will not just take for granted that a company is doing something they will want to know yeah. um, almost by default that, um, that they're not doing the, the, the wrong thing. And, and what are the other things that parents can look for in a brand um, that I guess are an extension of their core products? I mean, I understand that Pure Baby offer educational services and nesting workshops. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Yes, yes. We have um, some fantastic nesting workshops that we were running in the stores obviously prior to the COVID, COVID. <laughs> situation we um that's limited our ability to deliver these uh, workshops at the moment mm -hmm. but um what we do is in the workshops we um now offer uh, new parents and also grandparents and um, extended family members come along um just to update their skills which is really Lovely. Um, so we offer workshops um, that are to do with really providing that support to, to new parents who uh, I guess are trying to work out what do I bring to the birth of my child? Why do I need all of this hospital list that I'm given? Um, you know, how to swaddle. So we, we, we actually teach some of the parents how to swaddle their little one, which is really fun in the workshop. Um, we also cover bath time and how to set up a nursery. So it's a really valuable resource that we offer. Uh, during COVID, of course, um, we have taken all of these nesting workshops um, to our webinars. So we now hold the same workshops online. And this has just provided us a wonderful opportunity to offer that education and help and support to parents from the comfort of their home. And what's been fantastic from a business point of view is actually seeing how um, the, our nesting workshops that we held in store have been able to be scaled. And so we'll get and up to even more. Yes. Yeah. So we'll get, we'll get up to a hundred participants coming along and many of those uh, guests are actually uh, in their later stages of pregnancy. So it really suits them to be able to access this information online <clears throat> uh, from the comfort of their home. Um, we've even, um, I guess, been so successful with those educational workshops for parents that hospitals like the Epworth in, in That's Melbourne... That's incredible. Congratulations. Are. Yes, yes. So our educator um, actually goes... She used to uh, go along and deliver workshops. Now they're doing those online. So in the past, when I actually started the business, um, there weren't any sort of uh, resources available like that. You would just be given a list of items that you had to bring along. Yep. You didn't have any clues to what they were. Uh, you didn't know about sizing. You didn't know why you needed so many. You didn't know what a muslin wrap was. Mm -hmm. So these workshops really bring all of that to life for people and they start to actually, the reality of having the baby starts to set in. You can see it on their faces when they start learning about, um, you know, what to prepare for their baby and how to swaddle. It's a really exciting time for them. You know, it's really incredible when you, you see the difference between brands that are just in it just to make money and then the brands that, that are in it for a real true purpose because you do go further and extend and beyond um, what your sort of core offering is to ensure that you are making a difference and that you are helping and, and um, supporting families in every way, shape or form. And, and, and for example, these nesting workshops are a perfect example how a an organic clothing brand can sort of as, as one of your many um, extension offers that you have outside of, you know, your, your, your core sort of um, clothing brand that you sort of go over and above to be able to support families. So I have to congratulate you on that. It's really incredible. And I understand you also have a podcast. Can you tell us about <laughs> this too? Right. That's right. So 
for Pure Baby, it's not about just selling clothing. It's actually about how the clothing's made, the quality of the clothing, the designs, but also that incredible support um, that we offer in terms of education, either in store or online. So we actually really love being able to talk to our customers, to get feedback, uh, to support them through their journey. That's really important. That that obviously builds a real trust. And Absolutely. a lot of our customers really love to um, to actually come into store and talk to um, talk to one of our colleagues. Um, and you know, they do demonstrations in store with swaddling. They help you. They're not we're not midwives, we're not doctors. We bring experts into our um, workshop. So we'll we'll bring a first aid expert, someone, an expert on um, skincare, doing baby massage. We'll actually have an expert on um, nutrition, you know, providing that support to parents with what to give your child for their first food. Um, so we really relish in being able to offer all of these other types of helps for customers. And we've also brought that um, into a podcast series that we've just recently launched. So um, it actually covers, we actually bring experts in each week and we cover topics again like first aid. We have midwives on um, two of our different episodes. We cover um, how to care for your baby's skin. We cover mental health so you know the changes that are going to be happening when you have a baby mm -hmm. how to actually support your own sense of well-being and you know recover techniques like mindfulness and uh, we also have um, a fantastic um, episode that covers the body and how the body can sort of recover um, how the body responds to being pregnant and then how how the body recovers after it and things like pelvic floor and it's um a wonderfully um sort of uh you know resourceful a, and helpful yeah it's 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 um it's a really good resource and obviously it covers all the different stages um of pregnancy and when you've had the baby so different parents will actually take different parts of it out um, at different times. Depending but what they need at the time. Depending what they need. But yeah. I never had anything like that 20 years ago. I wish I had had something like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but I think of but all the now, families around Australia that you're helping and overseas, no doubt, as well. So once again, right. congratulations on that. And a further extension of your core services um, I'd love to talk about, but before we sort of start talking about the swimwear, I just wanted to acknowledge we had published your article. Um, and now this is the, oh, and the title of it is Kids Swimwear to Meet the Demands of a Changing uh, Climate and Environment. Now, for someone who hasn't read the article yet, can you just tell us a little bit about the article um, and I guess the inspiration behind it? Yes, yeah, so the inspiration um, behind the article was to do with the launch of our recent. Uh, recycled swimwear range. So we've actually awesome. managed, managed to be able to um, to secure an, a beautiful fabric that's actually made out of recycled water bottles. That's incredible. So, yeah. So in, in the past, we've, we haven't been able to, you know, in the past when we started the business, we were not able to use other fabrics like this. So this to us really goes to the heart of the business to be able to actually create beautiful ranges using fabrics that are recycled out of disused water bottles. Incredible. Into a product and a fabric that is uh, 50 plus UPF. Um, it's chlorine resistant. Um, we've done some beautiful designs. We've actually had to do a reorder on it because it's so popular. Um, so we've had it in, in store and online for about two or three weeks and um, Australian parents have, and also overseas uh, customers have really embraced this new product range. And, and how do you think, I guess, the new swimwear um, range reflects the needs, I guess, and the values of modern Australian parents, do you think? I think, um, first of all, 
um, with our problems with our ozone layer in Australia and the amount of time that we spend outside, it's really important that you're able to get a product that is 50 plus protection. Mm. So that to me was the number one um, driving force, as well as the fact that the material is made using recycled uh, fabric, um, recycled bottles um, for the fabric. So for me, from a sustainability point of view, I think that that, that is what meets the needs of the modern customer. They're not necessarily wanting to buy products that are harmful for the environment. So this product really gives a, an alternative choice um, to parents who are looking for something that is really beautiful quality, durable, chlorine resistant when we can get out to pools again. Um, <laughs> and also if you're lucky enough to be able to have a beach day, um, we, we actually offer products that cover the skin, protect the skin for the harsh um, weather in Australia. And we do sell a lot of our products um, overseas. So um, customers are really loving the fact that it um, conforms to um, the Australian standard, um, you know, the sizing and also the, um, the fact that it is suitable for our <coughs> climate here. So, now, yeah, I, I believe it ticks all the boxes. And I understand that it uses um, a fabric called Reprive. Is that how you pronounce it? Um, yes, that's right. Which yeah, so it's got a little um, sort of a swing tag on the products. If you're in store, you can see this. Um, and it is a label that you should look for on our products um, in the shape of a bottle. So okay, you'll see great. the normal pure baby labels, but you'll also see that... Um, that particular um, reprise label attached to the clothes and also on the website when you're searching all of our products are actually made using reprise fabrics and, and do you think that the parents should be worried about the quality of clothing made from recyclable fa f fabrics such as reprise or not i wouldn't think so but i just as, as, as a general question no not at all i think it's um, a fantastic alternative uh, to buying um, a fabric that we do need for swimwear. So we need that stretch um, and we need that sun protection. Um, with our products, I guess the difference is that um, with the reprise fabric, we don't, um, it's not treated with chemicals to make it um, 50 plus UPF. So it's actually the, the thickness of the fabric that's ah, woven. I was gonna, so I was going to ask you, how material. does UPF rated material protect against the sun? I was going to ask you about that. So it's the thickness of the material, is it? Yes, yes. So uh, other brand, brands may actually treat the fabric, but we actually use a fabric that is uh, thick enough um, to be 50 plus. So it's uh, thick and it will protect um, and durable and soft and also a fantastic choice for the environment. And so, I mean, how do you think, I guess, the new swimwear range makes that lasting commitment to children's health and the environment, keeping, um, I guess, you know, everything sort of tied in together with your ethos and your mission and your vision overall? Yes. I mean, this is just an extension of what we already do at Pure Baby. So offering, um, we didn't offer swimwear before, and we were really keen to be able to offer the full and complete wardrobe um, for a child up to the age of five. So for, for us, it's an extension of what we already do. And mm -hmm. um, it's a choice of being able to manufacture sustainably in another product category. And, and, and how would a parent then, I guess, know the difference between Pure Babies? swimwear range and other sort of recyclable materials in the market then how would they no, no, get to understand the difference between the two apart from the beautiful designs um, it will be basically the fabric um, that we are using on our swimwear which is recycled so other brands may not use recycled um, plastics from bottles whereas um, with our production on all of our designs for our swimwear, we're actually using recycled um, materials. This is, once again, congratulations on this. It, it is, um, as you said, an extension of your, your core business, but no doubt is um, 
going to make and is making an incredible difference. And I'd oh, love it's to- so exciting to be able to <laughs> offer swimwear to our customers. <laughs> as well. So, I mean, what does the future look like for, for Peel Baby then? Well, we're, the future is really exciting. We're expanding um, significantly in international markets. So currently we've expanded into the UK. Um, we have a presence in quite a few other countries as well, and we do ship to other countries. We're growing our online channel um, significantly, especially during this period. It's really accelerated uh, the ability to scale the business um, within Australia and also into other markets. Mm -hmm. um, and we're also expanding into other categories. So not only do we offer all of our beautiful organic cotton clothing for babies and children and also premature ba babies, we're also looking at um, doing a lot of other product, um, product categories like um, our play range. So. We've been offering uh, beautiful um, beechwood teethers and we're also developing some natural rubber teethers for babies um, so that um, when you're looking for um, something to help your baby soothe when they're, when they're up in the middle of the night or during the day when they're getting their teeth, um, you can also choose something that's um, certified by Goals, which is the equivalent of GOTS, but for um, natural rubber and latex products. So that just covers the supply chain. The GOLS, chain. did you say? GOLS, yeah, G-O-L-S. Mm -hmm. So that actually is the control union. Um, it's a very similar process to GOTS, which is Global Organic Textile Standards, but this then applies to another category. And um, it may, what it means is that we'll be able to offer products that are certified. It's actually a world first. So we're Congratulations. We pioneering in that field too. Goals is a new thing that I think customers will start to look for in the future in all of their, whenever they're buying anything that is going in their, their child's mouth. So. And, look, and how, how do you sort of hope all of this, I guess, would contribute to your life's legacy overall? What, what, do you, what do you hope for your life's legacy? Because what you're doing is really incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again. Uh, but I do really feel that we have in the past and in the future and in the present been able to raise awareness for um, organic cotton and other environmental um, sustainability and manufacturing. And I feel that by supplying, you know, 18 years worth of clothing to generations of children, we've been able to raise awareness so that then that puts a good amount of pressure on other businesses to also follow those sorts of principles. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited about, I guess, the future as well. So I think that not only have we been able to um, change the way that people purchase uh, for their little ones. I think that um, in the future, this is only going to kind of increase um, other businesses, uh, sort of the demands of the customer and um, increase other businesses uh, to also look at their supply chain and their manufacturing <clears throat> and make sure that they're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. Look, thank you so much today, just for, as, as I said at the start, to give us a ability to have this insight um, to be able to speak to the founder of, of a business and the heart um, and the heartbeat um, of a business is is really uh, really really special and and wonderful to be able to show parents um, just you know the passion and just the the, the reason um, behind everything and hopefully given them the ability to to support brands um, starting with pure pure baby of course um, but in 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 I guess, in all aspects that are ethical in the supply chain um, and, and just for, for, for families overall, just to, to make that decision to, to spend the time to understand, you know, with clothing, you know, what, what it's made out of, um, what is just the whole story and everything that we sort of are consuming um, in our lives and moving forward. Now, if you were to summarise, I guess, just your key messages for anyone watching and listening, what would they be? Well, thank you. Thank you very much for supporting us. And, um, you know, 
I guess my my message would just be um, yes, it's a really challenging and um, sort of difficult at times journey into parenthood and um, the the pressures and the lack of sleep and and everything else that comes with parenting um, and the responsibilities is um, you know whilst we're doing that um, definitely you know look at where your products that you're buying um, to put on your child's skin are coming from and you know um, think about um, where they're coming from and how they're made and um, yeah that's I guess how I would like to um, how I would like to be um, the message that I would like to get across to yes. and, and the if, listeners. And if, I guess if, if um, sort of any of the families um, want to find out more information and or um, access to some of those extension services as well, whereabouts can they find you guys? Yeah, so they can actually go onto our website um, and sign up for any of the uh, webinars um, where we've got a quite a big presence on social media. Um, so um, jump onto our Instagram account if you've got time. Um, and also, I guess, if you are in New South Wales or any of the other states that are still open, you can come into one of our retail stores. Um, but yeah, you can jump online to www.purebaby.com.au and please feel free to message us or jump on a call. We'll be really happy to speak with you and offer you um, support outside of, outside of buying baby clothes. We would love to hear from you and to connect with you. Mirabai, thank you so much for everything today. You're a true inspiration um, and a pioneer and it's been a great honour. I so say thank you for thank your time. Thank you, Rachel. It's been wonderful talking to you. Wonderful. And take care and all the very best of luck with everything in the future. You're a brand undoubtedly that I'll continue to support and, and um, advocate for everything that you do because it is incredible. But thank you again for your time. Take care. Stay safe. Thanks, and we'll speak Rachel. again soon. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye.